Hey everyone, and welcome to the sixth and final episode in my scrolling platformer tutorial series. Yeah, I know, it's the final episode, sad, but I have an awesome episode for you. Today, we're going to be adding the ending to this game, so you can actually make it to the very end of this level, and a timer as well, with a nice timer. And that's going to look awesome as well. That way you can try to speed run this game, see how quickly you can play through. Don't forget to jump on the like button and pick up the subscribe button and throw it against the wall. Also, drop a comment down below. But anyway, let's get coding. All right, you know the deal. Two new sprites. I got endpoint and score. Within endpoint, I have one costume that's like a, I really don't know, to be honest. It's just a thing, but it just has a bunch of cool symbols on it. Then I have a really cool looking lit up version of it. It. You see it's just kind of shiny and I really like it. I don't know why. Then in the score, I just have one through nine with letters in red. And then I have zero after nine and then a period. And that is actually it. All right, so let's first fix an issue. So if we go ahead and run over to these logs, you can see that if we jump facing a log to the left like this, we have some crazy stuff going on. And that is because I didn't actually finish the wall sensor script so click on to it and see this point in direction a backdrop of stage except changes to player and do direction of player and you should see that that fixes up that issue now there we go is working properly let's start with the score the score is just my score counter you can go back and watch that video if you'd like the link will be in the description but why is that so small pull out a when I receive start followed up by a go to front now do a forever loop within this and create a brand new custom block name this clone costume then a slash slash and do costume with a colon and then an input called cost for short a label called x pause colon an input called x a label called Y pause with a colon and an input called Y. A label called line space and then an input called L. And I'm going to change this costume to C for short. And you're going to want to click this box and then click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom out and put this block over here and pull that block into this forever loop. Start with a broadcast and do a new message named delete clones like that. And click click OK. Now under here, when I receive delete clones, delete this clone. Now pull out a go to and fill in these parameters with X and Y. Now go ahead and create a new for the sprite only variable called hashtag and click OK. Next go ahead and set to 1. Now you can go ahead and repeat the length of the costume or C if you did that. Switch costume to letter the hashtag thing of C or costume whatever you did. Now create clone of myself. Change X X by size times line space or L for short. Now change that hashtag thing by one, then go to front. I'm going to set the line space to 0 0.15, the X to negative 218, and the Y to 155, and then the costume to like 25 for now. Okay, nothing is actually appearing. That's because we need to do a when I start as a clone, a show, and then a forever loop, and leave that blank for now. So you can actually see that now we have our score counter, and if we type a random number in, it will update. But it is kind of crammed there. So let's make it to where you can customize the size and color and all of that stuff. In this forever loop, we are going to clear the graphics effects, set the brightness effect to 100 so it's wide and set the size to 50. So now you should see that it works a lot better. But we're having a little issue here. The original main sprite is popping up right here and that's that big ugly red three. Add a hide at the end of this loop right here and immediately that ugly three goes away. If in your costumes you made a period and named it period, you should be able to do decimal numbers. So 5.5. There you go. You can see that that 
that works properly. Now we need to make the actual timer that keeps track of the time. Go into the player and find this loop right here. And now add a new broadcast, put it right below the broadcast reset. Now change this broadcast reset to a broadcast reset and wait. Underneath that, our new broadcast is called start timer. So it resets it and waits and then it broadcasts timer. Now in the backdrops, we're going to pull out a when I receive start timer, wait until backdrop of stage and changes to X speed of player is greater than zero. Then we are going to reset the timer forever, make a new variable called game timer. And that is going to be for all sprites. And now we're going to set game timer to blank divided by 100. Then floor of, which is this abs of block, you just have to change it in the drop down of timer times 100. So if we go ahead and do that, floor of timer times 100, then take all that divided by 100, like so, pull out a when I receive reset, set the game timer to zero. You should see now when we start the project, it is zero. But as soon as we start moving, it starts the timer. So that is awesome. But there's a problem. If we go to the left, it is making the X speed less than zero. So it doesn't count it as moving. So instead of doing X speed of player, you can do a abs of X speed greater than zero. So now you should see that still works for the right, but it also works for the left. So what the abs of does is it converts it into a positive number Number, no matter what. So if we do the abs of three, it is still three. But if we do abs of negative three, it converts it to three. So now our game timer is working. Let's go ahead and link that up to the score. So click onto the score and in this costume slot, put the game timer. If you hide the game timer score, it starts at zero. And as soon as we start moving, our timer goes off. Now let's just prevent some lag here by creating a new for this sprite only variable called old time. And now we're going to set that old time to game timer. Now we're going to wait until not equals old time equals game timer. So you should see that it doesn't actually work any different except it hides itself and then as soon as we start moving, boom, there it goes. Let's go ahead and make it to where you can actually finish the game by touching the endpoint. Go into the endpoint sprite and add a when I receive start forever loop, then a go forward 24 layers. Next, change size by 10 and add a divided by in here and a minus in the left side. Now add a size in the right side of this and do divided by three. And right here is where you can set your size. So I'm going to do it 100. Now go ahead and duplicate this when I receive and do when I receive level one. I'm gonna put it over here. Then we are going to switch costume to one, which is the unlit version. Make two new for the sprite only variables. The first one called end point x. Copy all of that, then click OK. Paste this and make another for the sprite only variable called endpoint y. Hide both of those variables and in the beginning set the endpoint x to 2012 and then the endpoint y to 582. Now yours may be different but those are just the coordinates that I came up with. Now when I receive start once again a wait until touching the player change size by 10 switch costume to 2. Last but not least when I receive tick, we're going to make a new block called go to with a colon, then add an input called X and an input called Y and click OK. Now put that up over here. And when I receive tick, go to scroll X minus end point X. Now take all of that times negative one and put that in there like so. Duplicate this and do scroll Y minus end point Y times negative one. In the go to, which I'm going to put down here actually put a go to block and then do x and y last but not least let's make it to where you can't see it once it goes off screen add an and and put an equals in both of the sides and then add an x in this one and a y in this one and then do x position for this one and y position for this one now go ahead and show otherwise hide let's go ahead and go find our nice new checkpoint if we go over here yes there it is but hang on a minute i didn't actually touch this yet i did wait until touching ground. I want to do wait until touching player. 
Okay, there we go. Here is the product. You can see that it is working and if we touch it, it lights up and that looks awesome. Now we just need to make it to where it stops the timer as well. Alrighty, so all we need to do is go into the player and pull out a when I receive start forever if touching end point. Make a new variable for all sprites called stop timer. Set that stop timer to yes. In the backdrops, when I receive start timer, set stop timer to no or in for short. So now in the beginning, it sets the stop timer to in for no, but hopefully if we go ahead and go to the, oops, I can't jump today. If we go to the very, very end, so if we touch it, boom, it's yes. So now all we need to do is replace this forever loop with a repeat until loop. So all we need to do is an equals and do repeat until stop timer is equal to yes. And now let's see if this all works. So I'm going to go into full screen and I'm going to get all of the checkpoints. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, Alrighty, so we're coming up. Watch the timer. It is going, and if we touch it, bam, it stops perfectly there. So now we have a timer to keep track of how fast we can do it. So I'm going to adjust some values because it seems like our player is a little too jumpy and quick. So let's set the jump height to 27, and let's make sure that you can still do everything. Bop, beep, boop. Okay, you can make it up that and everything is good. Now the one last thing is in the beginning, instead of just popping in right there, let's go ahead and delete all of this set stuff and then broadcast respawn player. Make sure you do not delete this player spawn X and Y. Now you should see in the beginning, it does this nice beam as well, just like we are respawning. Thank you all so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this episode and you also enjoyed this series. I know I did. It was super cool, fun making all this art. If you did, then make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing stay tuned for more scratch tutorials because i got a lot of cool stuff planned but anyway this has been owen and i am out